Okay, look, the year is 1997, and you have picked one, if not all three, Hanson brothers to be your boyfriend. Oh, what a time to be alive, okay? The hit song, Mbop, climbed to number one in 27 countries and turned the kid musicians into global celebrities. Zach, Taylor, and Isaac are all grown up now, and they're telling us what Mbop, Bop, bop, do wop actually means. <laughs> Not to mention, they're recording a new album. Nicole DaCosta and I have already swapped fangirl moments, and I know you have yours too, so check this out. <laughs> All these 25 years later, no one is more aware of the success of Umbop than the three brothers who created it. We all know how catchy the song is. It worked. It was a phenomenon it on its own. You know, yeah. it was Life. a cultural wave, tsunami of some kind. The song, off Hanson's debut, Middle of Nowhere, helped sell more than 10 million albums and knocked the notorious B.I.G. off the top of the charts. If you were around in 1997, Hanson, heard of him? Of course you have. You simply could not miss it. Mbop was everywhere. The three brothers have taken the world by storm. Yes, they have. Okay, guys. It's on the radio in France. They got their autographs. Isn't that so rad? It's been described as sounding like a song made in a lab specially designed to capture the attention of the entire world. <laughs> People mostly just feel that way and say those things just out of elation. Oh, you're a you're a teen idol. You're a heartthrob. Those kinds of things. But for you, you're like, okay, that's we're like, that's great. But we wrote this. We're the Hanson Rose, and we like to sing. Growing up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the brothers formed a band and bonded around this collection of rock and roll hits from 1958. It was one of these Time Life compilations. It was advertised on yeah. TV. Very naturally from that, we, we started emulating. I mean, songwriting starts with, with emulating something, and then all of a sudden, you're singing along and you're making it your own. The chorus for Umbop popped into their heads while at work on another song entirely. We were trying to write a background part for a song called Boomerang. So Boomerang was already syncopated. Bing bang, hit me like a boomerang, light turns green, blood starts flowing, right? And for some reason we thought, that's not complicated enough. We should add like a complicated part underneath it. And so, um, bing bang, hit me like a boomerang, light turns green, blood starts flowing. Bing bang, hit me like a boomerang, light turns green, and my heart yeah, starts pumping. Yeah. It's just so, a lot of gumbo. Yeah. <laughs> they ended up separating the two songs. And a year or two later, matched that irresistible tune to an idea and a lesson you might have missed. Oh, yeah. oh, what is an umbop? It is a frame of time. In an umbop, they're gone. In an umbop, they're not there. It's saying, look, like that, you're going to be at the end of your life. You're going to be past this moment. Yeah. Be conscious that every choice you choose not to take on is one you may not have the opportunity to make again. You're nine. Nine, yeah. You were 11-ish, mm -hmm. and you were 13, 13 yeah. and you're singing about the ravages of time. Yeah. <laughs> we were already getting these messages from our parents. Hey, you know, you've just got to be you, and people won't always understand you, and, and it was, it really connected. Though the band recorded other hits, nothing could match the commercial triumph of Umbop. Yet the brothers did find a loyal base of fans and a new path to success through their own independent record label. It's getting colder in this ditch where I lie. At that moment in our life, you're, you're saying, you know what? We're gonna decide to claim what success means. This, for us, is to, to own our own destiny, to talk to those fans, 
and let's see if we could have a number one Billboard independent album, and we did. And that's what you've been doing ever since. Yeah, that's what we've been doing ever since. Yeah. <laughs> this theater is the legendary spot for Nashville. We caught up with the band at Ryman Auditorium on a world tour for their latest album, Red, Green, Blue featuring five songs from each brother. I don't think there's a lot of bands like that where every member sings and plays and writes and kind of could be doing it completely on their own, but choose to do it together. It's that bond. You can say, I didn't give it a wrong way. Another minute on our way, this time around. And that sound. Oh, yeah. that continues to attract fans who still pack into theaters to hear the band perform their latest and greatest. Twenty-five years after they first harmonized about holding on to those who care, the Hanson brothers are still living those words. We're a band that probably is not much more understood than we were misunderstood when we started out. Why do you say that? Because I think just like we were influenced by music that was what wasn't from our time, um, we are a band kind of happily outside of our genre because it's really all just about what we're saying. And the story is what matters. The, the message behind the song, and if it takes 25 years, we'll still be here. Ooh, now here's the big surprise, okay? Hanson is bringing their tour right here to Portland later this month. I know, I know. They'll be at McMinniman's Crystal Ballroom on Sunday, August 28th. Tickets are only $39.50. And the concert starts at 8 p.m., so make sure you get there early. Get your ticket. Get ready to be taken back in time, okay? Buy your tickets at etix.com right now.